Thank you. Thank you so much. It's just great to be here for Flutter Interact this year. Whether you're here in person, uh, here in Brooklyn, whether you're attending one of the over 500 viewing parties around the world from Lagos to Instan Istanbul, whether you're watching on the live stream, or whether you're catching the highlights on YouTube, welcome. Our goal for this year's event is to highlight the creative expressivity of Flutter as a platform for interactive content. We want to give you a sense today of the range of capabilities as a tool for designers, for developers, for creative coders. Whatever you call yourself, if you care about building beautiful, native experiences for any device that paints pixels to the screen, we want Flutter to be a canvas for you. So we're going to start by talking about our vision for Flutter. We shipped our first release of Flutter a year ago, almost to the day. And that first release focused exclusively on mobile devices, on building apps with a single code base that run on iOS and Android. But today, we're focusing on a more complete vision for Flutter as a portable, multi-platform SDK for pretty much anywhere you might want to paint pixels on the screen. And that portability of platform is ever more important. You know, we live in a world where internet-connected devices are pervading every area of our lives. Many of us transition throughout the day between multiple devices, phones, watches, and other wearable devices, tablets, desktops, or laptop computers, televisions, and increasingly uh, smart displays like the Google Nest Hub. And so in this emerging world, the focus starts to move away from any single individual device towards an environment where your services and software are available wherever you need them. As Matthias has mentioned, we call this ambient computing. And this is the world we built Flutter for. Flutter is the first UI platform that is designed for this ambient computing world. And this vision is unique to Flutter, a portable toolkit for building beautiful native experiences wherever you might want to paint pixels on the screen. So with Flutter, instead of being forced to start your application development by asking where do you want your app to run, and having to staff a team and skills and everything else, starting with that question, we want you to be able to begin with a different question. We want you to be able to focus on what you want to be able to build. And in this multi-device, multi-platform world, Flutter is providing you with a framework and tooling for creating user experiences without compromise on any device or form factor. You know, we want you to be able to start with your creative vision and make the decision on your target platform later. We want you to be able to solve problems for all your users, not just those who happen to have the same device that you have. And we want you to be able to build beautiful, tailored user experiences and user interfaces, not just the boilerplate UI that matches someone else's design system. Flutter is designed for beautiful applications, giving you control over every pixel on the screen. It's fast. We're powered by the blazing fast Skier graphics engine, the same one that we use in Android and Chrome. And it's productive with features including stateful hot reload that let you make changes to your running app and see the results in real time. It's open with a BSD-style license that encourages forking and experimentation, and an ecosystem of thousands of packages covering everything from Firebase to Google Fonts to Bluetooth to SQLite. And so that is Flutter, beautiful, fast, productive, and open. The first UI platform designed for delivering tailored experiences in an ambient computing world. It's been great to see how Flutter has flourished in the uh, short time since its initial release. Already, well over a million developers are using Flutter for apps both large and small. And we've seen billions of installs of Flutter apps to date. Last month, GitHub published their State of the Octoverse report. And as the largest site for open source, of course, they have unique insights into the open source community and uh, trends amongst adoption. 
and we were surprised and delighted to see Flutter be the number two fastest growing open source project on the site, having tripled in size across the last year. And also to see the Dart language that powers Flutter be the single fastest growing language that they measure. Yeah. And that popularity is also vis visible in this list of GitHub's most starred projects. Last year, we were proud that Flutter was one of the top 40 projects. And this year, it's one of the top 10. You know, even at Google, starting an open source project from scratch is a risky endeavor and a bit of a risky career bet. So this is just our chance to thank you for your support and interest. We, we don't take it for granted. And we continue to work every day to try and build a better project for you. Thank you so much. So the rest of this morning, of this uh, session, is uh, divided into two main chapters. Firstly, we're going to start with our progress on bringing Flutter to more platforms, this ambient computing vision. Uh, and then secondly, we're going to talk about the work that we've done to make Flutter a canvas for creative expression, unlocking designers and developers to build whatever experiences they have in mind. So let's start with the first of these two, Flutter on every screen. And today, in our journey towards Flutter, delivering on that ambient computing vision we've described, we're focusing on three core form factors that make up the bulk of our work today, mobile, desktop, and web. And up till now, as I've mentioned, many people have thought of Flutter as a mobile framework. So we're going to start there, and then we'll expand out. Today, I'm pleased to announce the immediate availability of Flutter 1.12, our latest stable release of the Flutter framework. Yeah. Flutter 112 includes over 1,500 pull requests, representing the work of hundreds of contributors, both from inside and outside of Google. And there are many more new features than I can do justice to in uh, a short while. But a few highlights. We have dark mode, full dark mode for iOS, including all the new acrylic materials and the adaptive colors, the beautiful work that Apple's done uh, around dark mode. Uh, we have new uh, widgets that help deliver pixel-perfect experiences on iPhone and iPad. We're transitioning to the new Android X support libraries uh, on Android. Uh, we've upgraded uh, support for Add to App, enabling you to take Flutter and embed it in an existing app, uh, including things like preloading the engine for faster startup. Uh, we've got the new Google Fonts package that Matthias mentioned for easy access to nearly 1,000 open source fonts. And a new Flutter gallery that makes it easier than ever to try out all the new widgets and experiences. Uh, we've got so much to talk about today that that is all I'm going to say about Flutter 112 itself. Uh, this is live. It's rolling out now for download at flutter.dev. So when it comes to building apps, we have the same needs that you do uh, ourselves at Google. Uh, our own product teams, of course, have all these same challenges, how to deliver apps to all of these different places. And in fact, Google is using Flutter in over 20 different projects at Google, from ads uh, to the Google Nest Hub uh, to various startup projects. One of Google's newest and most innovative consumer products is Stadia which brings the most powerful cloud-powered gaming experiences directly into your living room. Of course, Stadia needed a UI experience that matched gamers' expectations. So to tell you a little bit more about how they built their mobile companion app, I want to invite uh, Roberto Scaramuzzi, who's the technical lead for the Stadia UI team. Roberto. Hello. Thank you, Tim. Uh, my name is Roberto, and I work on the Stadia front end. Uh, so for the few people in the audience who don't know what Stadia is, uh, it's a new gaming platform that, uh, that Google launched just a few weeks ago. Our aim is to enable everyone to play anywhere, anytime. 
So where does Flutter come into this? We want to build a companion mobile app for Stadia. It would help gamers set up their accounts and hardware and provide a game store and social features. We wanted uh, to support uh, unified brand and capabilities on both Android and iOS. The UI should be modern and cool to match the gaming culture and be performant to match the high standards for quality and latency that we had set ourselves for the games themselves. Most importantly, we were working with the tight deadline. The release date had already been announced. Um, <laughs> so we started with a small team, and we ramped up fast. And let me show you what we built with Flutter in just a few months. So, uh, so I talked about uh, setting up hardware. This is, these are the screens that, uh, that allow you to uh, set up your game controller. You know, connecting to Wi-Fi and so on. Look at the cool animations we built with Flutter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is our home screen. Uh, it shows the games that, that you already own. Um, uh, this is the store. This is the game details page for uh, an exclusive game, that we, Guilt, that we have on Stadia. Um, this is our friends page and search. Okay, I'm back to the home page. So, what happened? First of all, we delivered on schedule, which is awesome. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, one of our concerns was that we had to interact with a lot of native services. So we had to interact with game controllers, with Bluetooth, with Firebase. And we had a few concerns about that, but actually the interaction went super smoothly. Uh, as I said before, we want to build a platform that everyone can play on. And we launched in 14 countries, almost as many languages. And Flutter's capabilities made building in uh, accessibility for uh, disabled gamers uh, into much of the app. And most of all, everybody's happy. <laughs> uh, we very much hope our users are happy. But also, uh, the developers are happy because of the, uh, of the development cycle, uh, because of the platform. And UX and product are happy because they see their vision come to life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Roberto. That is so cool. I'm really uh, thrilled that Stadia chose uh, Flutter. Of course, many uh, companies outside Google are also using Flutter for their app development. Uh, and uh, if we move to the next slide, uh, one example that we're calling out today is eBay. Uh, Woo! Whee! <laughs> Looks like we may have some eBay guys in the house. Uh, this week, they launched their brand new app for car enthusiasts, and uh, eBay built this app from scratch using Flutter. We're thrilled to have eBay on board. Uh, and another recently ex released example of Flutter on mobile devices comes from Splice. Uh, Splice offer an audio library of millions of sounds, loops, and presets uh, that help musicians bring their ideas to life. And so here to tell you a little bit about that is their principal engineer, Angelina Fabro. Welcome, Angelina. Hello, Brooklyn. Hello, everybody on the live stream. I'm Angelina Fabro, and I am a principal engineer at Splice. Um, I'm also the technical lead on our mobile applications team, and I'm here today to tell you the story of how we built our new mobile app using Flutter. So what is Splice? Well, imagine that you're a musician or a music producer, and you're working on your next bang and track, or perhaps you're in a project where you've been given a very, very specific creative brief. And you're looking for the exact right sound to fit the feeling or the mood or what your client is looking for. 
So Splice has a giant library of rights cleared samples, bits and pieces of music that you can use in your track. Everything from drum loops to piano chords, trumpet licks, sound effects like laser zaps, even the sound of London in the rain. So we have sounds and ideas from thousands of well-known artists as well, such as Steve Aoki and Dead Mouse. Splice helps you find the right sounds when you need it so you can stay in the creative flow and finish your track. But why build a mobile application for a process that for most music producers is primarily a desktop first experience? Well, think of the experience on mobile for, for musicians a little bit like photo filtering apps on your phone, right? Like you might take some photos, you swipe through the filters, that looks kind of cool, and you experiment, you get some ideas, some inspiration. But the real photography work for you happens later when you're at your desktop. So we had a hypothesis. It would be useful for you to build your library of sounds on the go so that you could use them later. Now, to validate this hypothesis, we chose to build our mobile application in Flutter. After trying it, we fell in love with the developer experience. For us, separate iOS and Android teams was going to be a non-starter. The speed to validate hypothesis was critical. We were excited by the technology and especially by the promise of native performance deployed from one code base across multiple platforms. And since Splice really is a multi-platform experience, we're investigating it for use on the desktop in our desktop application in the future. So let's take a look at the app. All right, so oh, what we're looking at here is the Splice Home. And at the very top, you can see recent releases. These cards that I'm scrolling through are sample packs. And you can think of a sample pack kind of like an album of samples. Below that, we've got our top packs. That's the stuff that is most popular right now on Splice. And below that, we have a selection of content that's been curated for me today. So what am I feeling like? Let's take a look at this dance hall pack. All right, all right, that slaps. Let's uh, click on the download button and add that to my Splice library. Maybe one more? How about some steel drums? Okay, all right. But you know what? I woke up in a whole mood this morning. I, I, I want to look for a sound that captures that mood. I was watching uh, the end of Evangelion recently, so I've been watching some anime. Um, and I, I'm looking for a sound today that is really going to capture the feeling of a, of a slide transition or, or a segment change in a keynote presentation. So let's go over to, let's go over to Slice Search. Mm, and I want something cartoonish, yeah. So let's look for anime shimmer. Let's see what we get. Okay, there's a lot of results. What about this one? That's pretty fun, but that's a little more melodic. I want, I want something that's percussive. So what about... That's the one. That's the one right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the download button again, and as mentioned, that puts it into the Splice library. And what I end up with is this giant list here showing all my recently added sounds. What's fantastic about this, though, is that as I download them on my mobile, they're there for me when I end up at the desktop application. Everything syncs automatically, so that when I'm in the flow making music, Splice is right there with me. All right. So what did we learn from all of this? Well, we learned that our hypothesis is actually a really good one. Uh, the mobile application has been officially launched for about a month, and it's already driving a really significant amount of downloads for across all of our surfaces. We know that the Flutter community is really awesome. Um, whenever we had a problem or a question, you know, uh, the, the developers on this project, self-included, this was our first time using Flutter. Community was super supportive to help us answer questions, and so was Google as a partner. You know, my conclusion here really is that Flutter is incredibly powerful. We're excited about its future, and especially about building the next generation of features for the Splice mobile app. Thank you. Thank you so much, Angelina. OK, so that's a quick rundown of Flutter 112. We're now going to shift gears and start talking about Flutter on desktop and web. And we'll start with desktop. We've made a lot of progress on the desktop, uh, with growing support for Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Uh, supporting desktop apps requires work in three core areas. Uh, firstly, we have to build the tool chain and the host support uh, to enable execution of Flutter from a new operating system. 
Secondly, we have to expose new uh, input mechanisms like keyboards and mouse pointers and buttons that simply don't exist on a phone, and we have to make those available uh, to the operating system or to Flutter. And then thirdly, uh, we have to do some UI work to enable apps that uh, have a, a desktop uh, feeling uh, to have that look and feel so that they uh, express the desktop environment, things like resizing uh, and different interaction patterns. So today, we're pleased to announce that the desktop support has reached alpha quality for Mac OS and is now available as part of the dev channel. So for the first time now, you can use release mode to build a fully optimized Mac OS application using Flutter. So an adventurous developer could now share a complete production speed executable with others. So that's the desktop. The web is even harder in some ways because of its incredible ubiquity and its support across mobile and desktop browsers. But we've seen tremendous interest in seeing Flutter produce web output, uh, particularly since we shared our preview release at Google I.O. Uh, this year. So when you target the web with Flutter, you don't have to learn a new set of skills. You don't have to fork your code into something that's slightly different. Whether you're targeting mobile, desktop, or web, you're using exactly the same Flutter framework library. You're not using a fork. You're not using a different version. You don't have to worry about differences between the platforms. It's the same code. And the magic is that because the Dart language that powers Flutter was built with the web in mind from the outset, so you can compile exactly your same code to both ARM for mobile and JavaScript for the web. And rather than shipping as a plugin, Flutter uses exactly the same HTML components as any other web app. So, for example, a text input field that has the same password manager, clipboard, cursor, emoji support, all of those things appear because it's just the same as any other HTML input uh, class. So, again, what you get is all the power and the productivity of Flutter combined with the compatibility and the openness of the web. So today, we're proud to announce that our web support has hit the beta milestone and is ready for active development. Now, we're still working on a few things. We've got a little bit of performance work to do, a bit more browser compatibility, a little bit of desktop accessibility to do, among a few other areas. But we're ready for you to give it a try for a whole variety of different core scenarios, from things like islands of interactive content to companion web experiences where you've already built your mobile app and you want to just make it available as a web experience. I want to show you a quick demo if my machine's working. But before uh, we do, I want to introduce uh, one of the tools that support web development with Flutter. Rive is a designer for animated content. Uh, it's from a company that used to be called Two Dimensions. They've relaunched themselves. They brought their existing Flare application and rebranded it as Rive. And they've in continued to uh, invest in it and grow it. Uh, and uh, it's available now at rive.app. And so we've been using Rive and experimenting with a new Canvas Kit-based backend to see what could we do uh, if we combine um, the combination of uh, Rive and uh, Flutter's uh, web support. So we'll just uh, sign into this machine that seems to have gone to sleep and uh, load the uh, demo one more time. Let's see if this is up and running for me. Yes, jolly good. So this is a little uh, example that the Rive team built for us, um, which we're calling Dash Demo. And uh, the idea of Dash Demo is, again, just to try and push you know, this web support and see what kind of things could we do with it. So you might just recognize this little uh, Dash uh, mascot. Um, and here he is, uh, or here she is. Uh, we've never been too clear. Um, and uh, uh, I'm going to move uh, the bird around. Uh, one of the things that's really interesting to see here, it's hard to see on this, everything you're seeing here is a different Rive object. And so uh, at the background here, you've got textures and waterfalls. Uh, 
Uh, everything is, uh, has uh, some notion of uh, z-index, so you can see that uh, uh, dash moves behind the uh, menus, and all of this is deeply integrated here. If I slow down the speed for a moment um, and uh, pull dash across a little bit, you can see just a few of the little things that are going on. There's a whole variety of layers of animation being built into one dashboard here. There's kind of like the wobble as the bird moves up and down. The eyes follow and track uh, where I've clicked the mouse. Um, you can see you know, the, the feet are moving around. There's all kinds of crazy things happening here. Um, so we'll just uh, um, bump that up a little bit back in terms of speed. Um, and we thought we'll add a few more dashes to the screen and uh, have them all kind of wander around uh, the space together. And it's kind of fun just to see them all kind of uh, hopping around here. Um, and then we thought, well, let's sort of see how far we can push this. So we thought we'd add a few more. And uh, you can see they're kind of uh, all hovering around. Every single one of these is an individual Rive object with all of those layers of animation and things going on. Um, and they kind of look at you a little bit like the Mona Lisa. I'm never quite sure uh, whether this is good or bad when they stare at me like that. But there you can see them all kind of moving around. And I can sort of bump the speed up. Um, and let's sort of stick that to two times speed and uh, close that down again and have them all running around. screen. It's just beautiful the way that uh, you can use these same tools, creative visual tools, to build an experience like this, where the, uh, the creatures just move around and uh, a lot of fun. Anyway, that's uh, an example of uh, FlutterWeb using the uh, Canvas Kit experimental backend uh, powered by Rive. So, mobile, desktop, and web. Got it? Mobile, desktop, and web, all available to you from a single Flutter code base, part of our journey towards this ambient computing vision. So I can't go any further without brief mention of Dart, which doesn't just supply our, our mascot, but it's also the language that powers Flutter. And Dart is Google's language that's optimized for client development. And in addition to the fast adoption over the last year that I've already talked about, we've been adding new language support for UI developments. Uh, on this slide, you can just see uh, a short list of some of the new features we've added over the last 12 months. And a lot of the work that we've done in Dart uh, over this period has been focused on UI development, on how do we build a language that makes you productive as a developer, building beautiful Flutter uh, experiences. So Dart also includes a suite of tools uh, for Flutter developers, regardless of which uh, of the various different uh, devices you're targeting. And so to show off uh, some examples of what Dart offers, I'd like to invite two of my colleagues, uh, Chris and Zoe, to the stage. Hi there, you two. Hey, yeah. thanks, Tim. We've been investing a lot in tooling over the last year. And today, we have a few new features we like to show off. Some of you may already have experience with Flutter, but I know we have some future Flutter developers sitting in the audience today. Before you commit to Flutter, you will want to give it a try. And let's see how we can let you try Flutter without installing anything on your local machine. Let's try a tool called Darphead. Darphead was initially created to let you play with Dart. But recently, we launched a brand new version of Darpad that actually uses Flutter's web support to let you play with Flutter code in your browser. So to access Darpad, you can go to darpad.dev. And for those of you who have seen the previous version of Darpad, you may notice we have redesigned the UI to make it look more modern. Now let's go to the Samples dropdown and select a simple Sunflower app just to show you how it works. Once you do, you'll see the app running immediately in your browser. For example, oh, thank you. <laughs> As you can see, it's a real running Flutter app, so you can actually interact with it. You can go to the app bar to open the drawer, close the drawer. You can go to the slider to adjust the size of the sunflower. You can also make code changes. Let's say we want to change the color of the sunflower from orange to blue. As soon as Chris makes the change, let's see if Chris can actually find that code. <laughs> yes, and you hit the Run button, and you can see that change actually gets updated immediately. So Darpad, in addition to the Darpad uh, Playground, we have also embedded into learning resource. For example, 
If you go to one of our collabs or documentation, you will actually see DARPA has now been built into tutorials. So now you can learn. Thank you. <laughs> I love the energy from this room. <laughs> Thank you. So now you can learn the real world Flutter techniques. Use nothing more than a browser. And we hope you find it easy and fun to use. Well, now after trying Flutter and deciding that you want it to use for production, you would want to install the local tools. So another new feature we're announcing today in preview is called Hot UI. Hot UI lets you see the app's UI being hosted directly in your IDE and make changes there. Let's start by loading up Android Studio. And what you're seeing here is a ticket app already running in the emulator. And now let's open up the Flutter Outline View tab. It's adjusting its resolution for now. But as you click in the UI, notice the corresponding part of the code gets highlighted. And meanwhile, if you click anywhere in the code, the matching UI gets highlighted as well. And moreover, you can actually make changes in the code, and your UI will be updated. For example, now Chris is trying to change the color of the ticket app. Once he makes the change, with the existing hot reload feature, you can actually see the color gets updated within less than a second. Zoe, that green is pretty ugly. I agree with you, and I actually don't like it either. So let's see if we can do this better. Now this time, we go to the hot UI preview panel and open up the color picker and change the color right there. Well, Chris is kind of picky, so OK. <laughs> Do you like this better now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. As you can see, as soon as Chris makes the change, your UI gets changed, and also the code gets changed as well. So Hot UI let you directly connect your code to your UI, keeping both of them in sync as you change either. This feature will be available in the Android Studio as a preview for you to try today. And our next step is to integrate it into the Dart DevTools in 2020. So no matter what IDE you choose, and then you can actually use it. Well, I've been doing a lot of talking, so Chris, why don't you come over and tell sure. us about the next two new features? Great. Thanks, Zoe. Thank you. <laughs> OK, so Zoe just mentioned a tool called uh, Dart DevTools. And Dart DevTools is our standalone app for uh, Dart de uh, debugging, or Flutter debugging. And so the idea of DevTools is it's um, separate from any specific editor, so you can choose whatever you like. And today, we're pr proud to announce a brand new preview of DevTools, which you're looking at here. And we're very proud of this because we've actually rebuilt DevTools from the ground up in Flutter itself. So what has, that has done is given us the ability to implement some fun, cool new features. And so we've actually implemented a new debugging surface uh, here in DevTools using Flutter uh, that enables us to find one of the most common uh, problems that you'll find when you're uh, uh, debugging um, uh, Flutter apps. And so Zoe, if you could show, there we go. I think we've got here a layout overflow error, which is very common. Any Flutter developer in here has probably seen this already. We've got this you know, construction zone, police line, do not cross kind of UI that makes it very easy to see that you have an error. But we haven't done a very good job in helping you figure out why you have that error or what to do to fix it. So Zoe, let's see if we can use this new version of DevTools uh, to fix this problem. So what Zoe's done is she's selected uh, the component. And by the way, it turns out that the default view we had had all the information you needed uh, to be able to find this problem. However, you might have a trouble seeing it unless perhaps you all live in the matrix. <laughs> For those of you who live in the real world, we have uh, another feature we call the Layout Explorer. And the idea with the Layout Explorer is it helps you visualize your layout using important properties like width and height and flex and alignment so that you can actually see what's going on in your UI and why it's acting like it's acting. Now, one of the things that the Layout Explorer does is it looks for what might be potential problems and highlights them so that you can find them more easily. And so in this particular case, we see that the width of the child content is much bigger than the width of the parent. And so the Layout Explorer has marked that in red. Now, normally this wouldn't be a problem, but Zoe, I think we might also have a problem with our flex. So if we look at the flex property here, we see it's set to null. 
And so what happens is, because it's set to null, the parent doesn't know what to do with that extra content. And because it doesn't know, that's why you're seeing that error. That is the definition of an overflow error. So normally the way we'd fix this is we'd go into our code and we'd start madly typing and throw in extra code or remove code and see if we could fix it magically and hope that's the right way to do it. Well, the idea with the Layout Explorer is that you can actually interact with these properties live in your tool before you even get to your code. So Zoe, I think this is a flex problem. Let's set the flex parameter and see what we get. Ta -da. Oh, good. It looks like our problem has been fixed. And now when we go back to our code, we have confidence, not only that we know what code to change, but also what caused the problem in the first place. So the idea of Dart Tev Tools is that we are continually adding new debugging services for your real world problems so that you can fix your apps. And we hope you'll take a look at this new preview version of DevTools and let us know what you think. Okay, great. So Zoe, at this point, we have built our app with Hot UI and we've debugged it with Dart DevTools and we made it work great on a single platform. But Fl Flutter is multi-platform, right? So we wanna make sure that we can uh, support multiple platforms with our single source code. So I'm pleased to announce that as of today, using Visual Studio Code's multi-session debugging, you can actually debug both iOS and Android simultaneously. So you might think, at this point, it would be a reasonable thing for us to do to fire up Visual Studio Code and show you de debugging those two devices. And that would be reasonable but it would also be boring. So when we made two devices work, we thought, how far can we take this? And we, little, we went a little crazy. So gentlemen, if you will. I give you the Flutter Octopus. <laughs> Zoe? Zoe? Mm -hmm. So what I'm presenting here is a Mac Catalina machine running against seven simultaneous uh, targets. That includes uh, Pixelbook Go, uh, it, an iPhone S, an iPad Pro, a Pixel 4 XL, and an ancient Android tablet, as well as both the Windows version or the uh, the Mac version and the web version of this app, all being debugged simultaneously from a single set of source code. And each one of these uh, apps has their own state. So, so if you, you know, interact, just they're all different apps. However, because they're all being debugged simultaneously, Zoe, let's see what happens when we make a change. All right. <laughs> and because they're all under uh, being debugged, Zoe, go ahead and set a breakpoint. Once we uh, hit a breakpoint. Zoe can trigger that breakpoint from any one of the devices she chooses. And when she's uh, under the debugger, she has access to the watch window and the uh, uh, data tips and all the services of the debugger. And so notice here, let me guess, you use the iPad Pro. Exactly. And you can see the call sack here for that particular uh, device. Now, we don't expect you to go and build your own octopus or to... <laughs> to debug against all those devices simultaneously, but isn't it nice to know that Flutter supports all those platforms when you need them? Thank you very much. Back to you, Tim. <laughs> wow, that is cool. The octopus. I want one of those for my own desk. <laughs> uh, thank you again, Chris and uh, Zoe. Uh, so, uh, that brings us to the end of our first chapter. So, we've talked about things like Stadia and Splice. We've talked about new investments like web and uh, great tooling. Uh, hopefully, you can see the Flutter's continuing to grow. Um, but, I, but I also want to talk about another thing. I said earlier on, we want you to start not with what device you're building on, but what you want to create. So, the second thing we're talking about today is how Flutter can be a canvas for your creative expressivity. 
we see Flutter as being this canvas because it removes a lot of the restrictions that have plagued visually orientated developers and designers in the past. I think designers probably need something like these things. They need good performance, right? Uh, inspiration, of course. You have to come with your own creative ideas. Uh, powerful primitives, uh, a platform that supports the things you need to do. Uh, fast iteration, the ability to be able to kind of make changes and iterate in real time. Uh, and visual tooling. And so that's the kind of environment we want to build. And in this uh, second chapter, we want to lay out some of those uh, tools and uh, sources of creative inspiration that we think will help you build beautiful uh, applications. And in doing so, uh, one of the things that I saw in the run-up, uh, or that we saw in the run-up to Flutter Interact that really inspired us was the work of Robert Felker, who is a digital artist who uh, has created a series of generative art explorations with Flutter. Uh, and they combine geometry and texture and light in stunning ways. So we recorded a little video with uh, Robert, and I'd like to play that now. When I start a new artwork, it's just an inspiration. You just have a feeling. So between the first idea and the end result, there's just the same feeling. It's not about the visual. I'm not interested in what you see. I'm interested in what you feel. I'm Robert. My everyday job, I'm a Flutter dev and project manager. And uh, I'm also a Flutter artist. Previously, I was kind of locked by the tool. I can do a lot of stuff, but only what the tool permits me. When I found Flutter, it opened a door inside me now I can really push further. Generative art is a lot of research, like a lot. It's a lot of failure. It's a lot of failure finding the color, finding the form, understanding the good behavior of light. What's really good with Flutter is the speed of the feedback. It's nearly instant. Currently, artists do not understand the full potential of the tool. When you start Flutter, you start with uh, material design, or you start with uh, the iOS component, and you think this is Flutter, but this is just the, the tip of the iceberg. Or if you want to push, then you start to enter the, the Flutter engine, and the Flutter engine is like the jewels uh, of the Kuon. Each time I start to code, I just feel joy. So some people are painting, some people are cooking. I just do flutter. I'm fluttering. <laughs> Robert's designs are now available. You can actually buy them uh, as uh, framed artwork. And I love that you can now have a piece of flutter art uh, on your wall. So we're going to talk about a couple of tools. Uh, and to start off with, one that if you're a designer, you're probably already familiar with, and that's Supernova. And so I want to invite Jiri Tredsak to talk a little bit about what Supernova are doing with Flutter. Jiri? Thanks, Tim. So I'm a developer. In fact, I've been a developer for the last 20 years, and most of that time was spent building beautiful, interactive websites and applications. However, there was always this one thing that I really hated. It was the feeling that designers create something so amazing only for developers to recreate it from scratch. This, of course, isn't without its problems, as I'm pretty sure you know maybe too well. Details get lost, pixels get forgotten, and it just makes everyone so angry all the time. Worse yet, however, it leads to a very inefficient process, wasting time and resources that could be put somewhere else. So here is my question for all of you. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could automate all the boring and tedious tasks in a process and instead focus on being creative once again? For the past four years, we've built a solution that makes this a reality, and I would like to show you how it works right now. So Supernova works off of design tools that you already like to use, like, design, like Sketch or XT. I have a sketch design here, and if I would to create it from scratch, I would probably create the project, then export the assets, export the fonts, uh, 
code the layout. It's just a lot of work. So instead, I will bring this design to a supernova. I will select Flutter, and I will also select the screen that I want to import. And once I do that, everything becomes a Flutter component. So now everything is a Flutter component. Here on the left side, I actually have editor, where I can edit the behavior of the application, while here on the right side, I have a real Flutter application running in real time. But let's do something more amazing. There are two components that I would like to change into actual components. So first is the button. What I can do is I can convert this bunch of layers into actual button, and as if by magic, it actually becomes a button. And even though it looks the same, when I click on it, it behaves like a button. And I can do the same thing with a list of speakers. So instead, I will use a grid list component. And now it becomes a scrollable list. However, it doesn't really look the same because uh, it's scrolling horizontally or vertically, right? So I'll switch to a vertical layout because Supernova exposes all the properties uh, that you have available on all the components. Uh, I can also probably change the left inset just so it looks nice. So I think components are now pretty much done. Uh, let's move on to the layout. Uh, as you know, every application should be responsive, but fortunately I don't have to do that because while I was doing the components, Supernova computed the Flexbox layout for me. And so to show you that, I can just grab the edge and resize the application, and it works just like that. But I think the application is still a bit boring, so uh, let's add some fun to it. I can also trigger animations, and because we have our own animation engine in Supernova, I can actually make animation on fly. I could create some custom animation, but for this demo, I will select one from the demo library, so just maybe some bounce in, and now when I tap on a button, it actually bounces in, and that's it. I think my application is now pretty much done, but uh, I actually have a few more things to show you. Uh, you see, the true power of Supernova comes from a production code. And so if I click this magical button on the top, it actually generates the production code for me. And it has all the components, the entire layout, and all the assets done. Um, and now, as the last thing, I could export it, and I can either export or I can copy-paste the code. But I actually have uh, support for the hot, hot reload here, so I'll enable that. And once I choose the hot reload target, I can switch to Visual Studio, which is already synchronized. And now, when I restart the application and open the simulator, uh, it actually shows the entire application. And if I go back to the supernova, I change something, maybe make it a little more dramatic. Um, I go back to Visual Studio and synchronize it. Uh, it will actually show uh, the button. <laughs> and that's it. The entire application in three minutes. I think that's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and for this reason, I am now very excited to announce that Full Flutter support is launching today at supernova.io. And because we think Flutter is the feature of cross-platform apps, we are also making it free for all Flutter designers and developers so you can build great apps together. <laughs> but before I go, I actually have something amazing to share with you. Ever since the introduction of Flutter for Web, we've been hard at work bringing Supernova to everyone without any limitation. In the upcoming months, we'll be releasing a completely new Supernova, rebuilt from the ground up in Flutter. It features advanced support for enterprise teams, as well as code-enabled design system manager that serves both designers and developers equally. Together with Flutter, we will close the gap between design and code. I'm now really excited that Supernova is joining the Flutter ecosystem, and I cannot wait to see what you create with it. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Jerry. I, I love that not only is Supernova providing tools to help you build Flutter apps, they're going to be using Flutter to build Supernova. That really, I think, speaks to, uh, you know, hopefully the power uh, that we can bring. So that's one tool. 
And, and I want to shift gears just temporarily, because we want to talk a little bit about the creative experience with tools like Supernova. And one of the most inspirational people I've had the chance to work with over my professional career is Grant Skinner. And I'd like to introduce you to him now. Grant. Well, thanks so much, Tim. Uh, I am so excited to be here. 20 years. For 20 years now, I've been creating digital experiences uh, with a wide variety of platforms and a plethora of different frameworks. Most of them are great at what they do. You know, they let you build functional apps or functional experiences, but there have been very few that have really gotten my creative juices flowing. The first platform that I really fell in love with was Flash. I know it's kind of a dirty word now, but I loved it. What drew me to Flash was that I could fuse design and code, and I could use it to build both beautiful things, horrible things, but always unique things. It also introduced me to one of the most passionately creative communities that I've ever had the privilege of being a part of. I owe Flash a lot. Uh, you know, it, it really drove my love of design and code, and it let me build the company that I'm still running today. We built a reputation that's let us work with companies like Adobe and Google, Atari, uh, and Disney. But, you know, fast forward 10 years, Flash maybe wasn't quite as viable as it was when I started. But HTML5 was really building up to take its place. And, uh, you know, it was very similar to Flash. If we could imagine something, we could build it in HTML5. And so we were able to seamlessly pivot and take on this new platform. I still really love the web stack, and we still do a ton of work on it. But, you know, it's 10 years later now, and, well, I'm standing here at a Flutter conference, so you might be able to guess where I'm headed with this spiel. But uh, a really good friend of mine approached me a while back, and he really wanted to build an app for a game that we played together called Destiny. And at about the same time, I had a client that introduced me to Flutter. And I kind of poked around a little bit, gotten pretty interested in it, and I suggested, like, hey, why don't we combine these things? Why don't we build a Destiny app using Flutter? And, you know, he said, OK. So we spent the first week or so arguing about state management, because that's how you start any modern <laughs> dev program. Uh, and then he started writing the data layer, and I started building the UI. In a really surprisingly short amount of time, we were able to release an app that we called Redrix for both iOS and Android. And this app uh, made it through app review on its very first try. It's hovered between about a 4.8, 4.9 rating in general. We've logged zero crashes on the iOS app. And uh, we had a lot of fun building it. So, and we've, we've had a ton of feedback from the community about how smooth it feels, how pretty it is. And so to me, this is really a testament of what the Flutter team has created. The fact that we've been able to build this with so few issues, being just a couple of people with no experience whatsoever in Flutter or Dart when we started off, and just doing it for fun in our spare time is really amazing to me. See, to me, a good UI framework makes it easy to realize a design. A great UI framework inspires you to make that design better. And I really feel like I've found that with Flutter. Uh, I don't feel like I'm beholden to the framework. I feel like I'm elevated by it. There's a few kind of key points that, for me, stand out in what has made me like Flutter. The first is Dart. Um, I was pretty new to Dart, and I tend to be a little bit cynical of new languages, but it took a lot of the best things from C Sharp and combined with some of the things that I love about JavaScript and gave me this language that was just really easy to learn and easy to work with. Second thing is that there's a lot of existing building blocks, right? There's tons of first party and third party widgets. They're all open source, so I can use them as I want, or I can modify them to make them do what I want them to do. And when they don't do what I need them to do, 
I have really low level access to both layout and rendering, so I can do those like special weird things that make experiences great. And when that's done, I can wrap that up in a widget and take advantage of the compositional model of Flutter and just inject right, at, right back into the normal UI. Makes it really easy to both share and to integrate. And finally, I mean, no Flutter talk is, is finished without a mention of Hot Reload. Um, as a creative coder, I find Hot Reload to just be such an exceptional thing. It, it reduces the barrier of exploration. It makes it so much easier to play. I can iterate, I can refine, I can try things out, I can see how they look. I don't have that one minute compile time that just doesn't make it worth it to try and tweak that 0.13 to a 0.14 and see if it looks better. So as I was working on Redrix, I kept going back to my team and kind of sharing the things that I had learned. And I was really excited about how much my team was getting into this. Not just my developers, but even my designers seemed really interested in Flutter as a platform. So when the Flutter team came to us and challenged us to uh, basically show off what you could do with modern Flutter uh, by creating a series of UI vignettes, it was like a total no-brainer for us to say yes. So we did what we do. We jumped in with both feet. We started throwing together ideas. We started exploring the platform, doing research, and sketching out ideas. And you know, this is a tiny sample. We sketched out a lot of ideas. And we specifically made a point of trying to select ideas that we wanted to build, not select ideas that would be easy to build inside of Flutter. And to me, this is important, because it's really easy to make demos that are tailored to work on a new platform. It's much harder to find good ideas and then force them to work on that platform. So ultimately, there wasn't a single idea that we weren't able to realize. Like, yeah, we made compromises once in a while, but there was also a lot of cases where our idea got better as we implemented it. And I think, again, that's really exciting. I'm super happy with the end result of what we built, really proud of it, and I'd like to share a little video that we put together about them. Thanks so much. Uh, I'm <laughs> really excited that we finally get to show everyone this. We've had so much fun building these vignettes. Um, they're going to be, they are fully open source, and you can get information about them here and grab the source code. I really encourage you to check them out, play with them, rip out the pieces you like, throw away the parts you don't, and use them to make something really, really cool. Um, in addition to the source code, we're planning on doing some blog posts over the next little while, talking about sort of specific things that we learned or challenges that we faced. And we're also going to take some of the little reusable chunks and repackage them as widgets, add proper documentation. Um, finally, we are hoping to release, we'll see what Apple does, we're hoping to release a, uh, both an iOS and Android app that'll let you play around with these, widget, these uh, vignettes without having to compile the code. Uh, if you stick around, uh, later today I'm going to be doing a talk with one of my designers, and we're gonna talk about the process that we use to conceive of, design, and ultimately produce these vignettes. 
I hope you can join us there. Uh, I'd like to close by thanking the, uh, the whole Google team, the whole Flutter community for making this, uh, making Flutter such a fun sandbox to play inside of. One of the things that really draws me to new, to new technologies is the people around it, and I'm really excited to get to know you all a little bit better. So thank you. Thank you so much, Grant. Those samples are beautiful, and you can experience uh, some of them over in the uh, expo area if you're physically here uh, in person. If not, then flutter.gskinner.com. So uh, we're getting towards the end, um, but one more I want to talk about. For designers, creative tools are almost synonymous with one company, and that's Adobe. Their creative cloud suite is probably the default choice for any professional designer. And to talk about their experiences with Flutter, I'd like to welcome Kerry Schatz to the stage. Welcome, Kerry. Thank you, Tim. So uh, first of all, I'm excited and honored to be able to be here to present what we've been collaborating on with Google. So designers excel at creating rich and engaging designs that delight users, and Adobe XD free, by the way, enables design and team collaboration at the speed of thought, while quickly and easily targeting multiple platforms, form factors, and surfaces, the epitome of ambient computing. This is a perfect fit for Flutter's ability to deliver beautiful experiences across multiple platforms. Now, the problem with that is that translating these designs to code is a huge pain point, especially when you have to do it time after time after time when the design changes. So to help, we have collaborated together with Google to create a plugin for Adobe XD that exports real Flutter code that a developer like you or I could use immediately without having to reinterpret the designer's intent. I'm excited to give you an early look at what this looks like, so let's dive right in. So here, I have uh, my Visual Studio Code environment already set up. On the left, I have my iOS simulator running. I already have an app started. Um, and I also am running the uh, Dart Code plugin for Visual Studio Code. I also have Adobe XD running. Now, if you're not at all familiar with Adobe XD, it is a tool for designing at the speed of thought, uh, user experiences for screen design across all sorts of platforms. And I have a small design here, a small snippet from Grant's uh, designs uh, for his application. So what I want to do here is just show you the power of this plugin. This plugin lives inside the plugin panel. And uh, it will be available when we release it through the plugin manager. You can simply do this in application, search, install. You don't even have to restart XD. So let's show you how this works. I'm going to zoom into the badge here. And what I want to do, actually, is take this badge and transplant it into a more complex design. But let's start simple. So this badge has a, it's a really pretty badge. Um, so it has an icon, it has some graphics, it has some text to it. This plugin lets me do two things. I can copy this design and paste it directly as code, which is really cool. But I think even more amazing is it lets me do this as a reusable component. So it generates files automatically for me. So I'm going to select this artboard. And artboards can be used uh, as containers for screens or reusable widgets. And I'm just going to come over here and click Export Selected for Flutter. Now, it's already told me that it's updated a file, um, because I told it ahead of time where this file lives on my disk. Otherwise, you would have a picker. Now, nothing has changed in my sim, because I need to go tell uh, Visual Studio Code and Flutter where this lives. So I'm going to come in here. Oops. There we go. And I'm going to just use the badge, save this, and you can see immediately that we have a nearly pixel perfect representation of what, X, of what was in XD. And this is real Flutter code. So if you want to come in and inspect this file, you can do just that. And it looks just like you would expect. Super cool, isn't it? 
Okay, but that's not all. This is, what, this is to me what is the coolest part of this. So if I come back to XD, and I'm going to drill into this layer a little bit, and I don't know how obvious it is on screen, but there's a few layers in here that have a, la a label that starts with P and a colon. And this means that they're parameterized. So this allows me as the designer to give you a design, but the developer to supply their own data. So I'm going to come back to Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to just overwrite what the, desi what the designer has given me with some of my own text. So I'm going to say best copy, maybe for the category, and teleporter for the title. And immediately, it's re uh, updated inside of my simulator. What's even more cool is this separates out my data and from my design. So if I, as the designer, decide that, you know what, I want to change this color, I can do that and re-export it. And immediately, it's available inside of my simulator. And notice, it's kept my data. So this lets me segregate out my data from my design. Really, really cool stuff. OK, so this is a simple example, but what about something more complex? So thanks to Grant, we have this super complicated screen here. And how is this going to work, right? So I'm going to re-export it, this time to a separate file. I'm going to tell Visual Studio Code to use it. And just like that, we have a pixel-for-pixel -pixel representation of what was in XD. And this is real Flutter code, too. But I think there's a little bit of an empty space down here. So I'm going to take this badge and paste it in there. Copy. And I'm going to position it just where I want it. Re-export. And our badge is now in place. Super, super powerful. So I hope you can see that with this small example, how powerful this could actually be. So um, what we're really excited to announce is that this is going to be available open source. So we invite you to sign up at the waitlist on screen, and uh, we will get you into that. And we're happy to have you play around. We will release to the wider community later this year. Sign up at the link on the screen to join the beta waitlist, and we can't wait to see what you do this, do with this, with the combination of Adobe XD, with Flutter, and the XD to Flutter plugin. Thanks, Tim. Thank you, Carrie. Wow. Okay. So you've seen the two pieces individually and now together. Flutter as a platform that takes your code and lets you run it on any platform in an ambient computing world. Flutter as a, a platform to enable you to take your creative ideas and inspirations and turn them into beautiful experiences. You know, Flutter is at its heart an open source project. The value we derive for Google comes in part from the productivity gains realized from other product teams inside the company who use Flutter. But again, we build Flutter for you. We build Flutter with you. Our journey has taken us from a very mobile first focus towards this broader vision for Flutter as a portable UI toolkit. And we're going to continue to invest uh, ourselves and with others in the ecosystem in designer and developer tools that increase both the productivity and the beauty of your finished application. But the thing that really compels me about Flutter and the community of which we're all parts is not necessarily the big apps. It's the small individual experiences. It's the stories that come from individuals, people who use Flutter to solve real problems that are personal uh, to them. And I want to close with one example of that, a video that shows a little bit about how you can use Flutter in a very personal way. Let's roll that video. The day Amani was born, we were very excited to meet our daughter. Her birth was uh, supposed to go as normal. It was a very normal pregnancy. 
I mean, I look back and it is the happiest day of my life and the scariest day of my life all wrapped up in a 24 hour period. When she was born, they can't get her oxygen level higher than about 80 to 85 percent. And they said it has to be in the high 90s. They decide that they're going to take her to the ICU or NICU. They told me she has a heart condition and she had open heart surgery. At six weeks, Amani finally came home. She might have been in the home setting, but she brought the hospital with us. First year of her life, it was pretty grueling. She had her cardiologist, general surgeon, an ophthalmologist, a physical therapist, a feeding specialist, and an allergist. It felt like she had more providers than most people would have in their lifetime. Just thinking to myself, when is it all gonna stop? We found out about her eyes and we needed to start patching to help strengthen the eyes so that it did not develop into amblyopia, or lazy eyes as, as it's commonly called. Patching shuts off vision to one eye so that the other eye can get stronger. We had to keep track uh, of how many hours a day she was being patched. I would ask Danica every day, hey, did you patch Amani? And I felt bad asking that question, knowing that Danica was already overwhelmed. I thought, let me try to uh, use what I know to be able to influence the future, even if it's in a tiny, small way. Patch Me was an idea to help us communicate better so that we could share information about the patching schedule right around the same time frame. Being a software architect, I saw this new technology called Flutter. It helped me to connect the dots to say, hey, I want to do this. I would wait till Amani was in bed and then take uh, maybe an hour or two a night. I saw the Udemy course by App Brewery in collaboration with the Google team, so I felt like that was the right way to learn Flutter. Over the years, I've worked on all kinds of stuff, but Flutter has been the framework that I've been productive in the fastest. I was able to make Patch Me in, in a short time frame. The awesome thing about the Patch Me app is that now gives some very objective information to give to the care providers, where before, sometimes, you know, you underestimate or overestimate it. We realize that there is a need for this outside of our home. I decided that I should publish it to the App Store. My hope is it'll definitely spread throughout the U.S. for all, you know, even the world. Flutter allowed me to create Patch Me without having to sacrifice on either the app and its functionality or my family and my time with my family. What the app gave back to me was a lot of control. I have the best life partner and certainly children with special needs. It can either create a distance between parents or it can draw them closer and I'm, I'm very happy it, it brought us closer. You know, Amani has overcome so much in her short life. All the pictures, when we look back at it, we see how fragile she was. And you look at her today as a baby, and she's a daredevil. She is determined and headstrong. And my hope for Amani is that she continues to thrive, and we, as a family, continue to thrive. She has changed me to the core now I want to spend my time in a productive way to be able to give back, and Amani has taught me that. Yeah.